<clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Leader, and uh, thank you all for being here this morning. This is a, a pivotal time in the country. The Speaker's job is uh, to be all across the country and to be in, in as many districts as possible with our incumbents and our candidates, and we do all of that. Um, over the last week, I spent time in my district in Louisiana, but I also traveled to nine different states, and we went from the Deep South to the Midwest to even New York City. And everywhere we go, there is an energy out there among the people that they are, they're very animated because the people are simply fed up. They're fed up with the way things are going. They're fed up with the open border and all the catastrophe that that has brought upon the country. They're, they're fed up with the rising crime rate and the rising cost of living that's making it unmanageable for hardworking families. They're, they're, they're fed up about the weakness that we are projecting on the world stage at a very dangerous time. The reason our adversaries are acting so provocatively is because this administration is unable or unwilling to show strength on the world stage. And that same vacuum of leadership is being felt at this really critical time, this moment in our cultural history, in the history of our country, with regard to the rise of anti-Semitism. We desperately need, the country needs clear moral authority. We need the President of the United States to speak to the issue and say this is wrong. What's happening on college campuses right now is wrong. It is un-American. It is not who we are. The President seems unable or unwilling to do that. The Vice President, the same thing. Chuck Schumer, who is the highest ranking Jewish official in the history of the United States, is not speaking to this issue. And that is why we feel a direct obligation to do that. The Congress has a role we went to Columbia University on Wednesday. We faced that hostile crowd to speak clearly <clears throat> with clarity and conviction and consistency about this issue. This is not free speech. I'm a constitutional law attorney. I used to litigate free speech uh, cases with regard to campus expression on university campuses. This is not the free marketplace of ideas. This is open threats to Jewish students because of their faith and who they are. The, the, the Jewish students are unable to go to class. The administration at Columbia acknowledged that because they canceled classes for fear of physical safety of their students. Then they came up with this, this hybrid solution, which is even more discriminatory because it's only the Jewish students who then <clears throat> are admonished and encouraged not to come to class. Uh, that's not right. Before we went out and had the press conference, we met with a, a, a large number of Jewish students there on the campus at, at a safe house off, off campus. And they, they expressed their, their angst with all of this, their, their concern, their fear for their safety, and, and, and the intuitive feeling that we all have that this is not right, and it needs to be called out. So then we met, uh, went and met with the college president, Shafiq, and we told her that it is time for her to resign. If she can't control that campus, the first responsibility of an administrator on a university campus is the safety and security of their students. If, if, if one fails in that obligation, they have failed entirely. Columbia is out of control. This, in the last several hours overnight, I think they overtook a, a campus building. They're occupying a building now. They're unable to operate the university at a time when the students are preparing for their final exams. It's unfair, it's unright, it's unsafe, and it must stop. So we called for the police to come in and take care of it. If they're unable, then we need the National Guard. We have to have control of campuses. This is a common sense matter. The American people understand it. The crowd in Columbia, was chanting for Hamas. They're waving Hezbollah flags, Hamas flags. Hamas endorsed the crowd in the protest within an hour before we began to speak there on Wednesday. This thing is out of control. And the administrators who are allowing this need to be removed, and we've got to get control of these campuses. End of story. And we're going to continue to call this out. We're going to continue to uh, call it for what it is. Another thing that the American people are very frustrated about, of course, is as, as the leader mentioned and as all of us have referenced, is this administration's war on American energy. That's effectively what it has been. Since the day Joe Biden walked into the Oval Office and started issuing his barrage of executive orders, they have gone after the very lifeblood of the economy. Energy security is national security. And with his executive orders and the most recent one where he's paused LNG exports, he is empowering our adversaries. Vladimir Putin's war machine is being funded by European nations who are having to make contracts with him because they can't get liquefied natural gas from the U.S. They desperately need it. They want it. And we are making the decision through Joe Biden. Joe Biden has made the decision that he will hamper our own economy and energy production. Why? Because he is appeasing radical environmentalist activists in his party. This appeasement strategy isn't working. 
It is not working on the world stage. When you appease Iran and criticize Israel, it should be the other way around. It is not working when you, um, when you appease radical activists on all these issues and you deny the basic facts of what's good for the American people. It's, it's time for change. And we're going to continue to call it out. We're going to continue to pursue legislation. We're going to continue to continue to pursue the support of our small businesses. As, as uh, Chairman Williams said, the lifeblood of the U.S. economy is also small business. Seventy five percent of jobs provided by them and they are being crushed by regulations from these out of control agencies. We're going to be working on every one of these things through the House Republican majority, showing the American people what we're for and drawing the contrast so they can see clearly what our side is for, what the Republican Party stands for. And, and what the other side does. Uh, with that, I'll take a few questions.